Great. So, hello everyone. This is our first uh, job gossip session. So, this session is like, uh, as it is the title suggests, it's just uh, going to be like basically we having a um, conversation. It's not really a tutorial. I'm not really telling you anything, uh, teaching you anything. Ra rather, we're going to be discussing, um, and this is from you. Um, as you go through your job applications or as you're looking at jobs, uh, be it on Leap or on other uh, platforms, what kind of insights or what, what kind of trends you see, anything that you think uh, you can comment on, anything that you noticed, um, uh, any insight you have gained uh, from those jobs you have seen. Um, we want uh, basically we want to share uh, information that can help uh, can help um, can help each other basically when applying or looking for jobs. So let's start. This is the first one. So uh, I don't know how many jobs you have managed to see. Uh, like so, like maybe um, you didn't manage to see a lot, or like you haven't noticed trends yet. But yeah, just. Um, I'm going to be waiting for your you to volunteer. Think uh, maybe along the lines of this. Um, uh, of this question, so I will post uh, some questions to the. Um, let's say, um, like saying, like this can be like a general question that you can think about and yeah. So any volunteers, anyone who want to share something? Uh, so let me start with uh, maybe a simple question. This is uh, something I want to understand from you. Like, um, which platform have you use, been using to look up, for, look for jobs, basically, so far? Can you just you can write just in the chat box? Yes, I will work. Okay. Hello. Uh, so, I I actually uh, mostly used the Leap platform. So, uh, and some on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so the roles I actually applied to. No, I actually have seen around 40, 48, around forty eight jobs on Leap, uh, and more if we include. Uh, LinkedIn and other websites like Indeed and ZipRecruiter. So I I saw all, mo most of them from the Flip platform. So I, I think I run out of jobs. I still uh, I've been trying to refresh the the platform. They has no other jobs until now. So yeah. yeah. So the roles were mostly data data related. So yeah, okay. I I tried to apply one of them, but the one of them was interesting. But uh, it also wasn't in my track, I guess. Yeah. So it's just because there is heavy they heavily use uh, machine learning. That's because that's the only reason I tried. So uh, I think. Uh, I skipped around 34 jobs, uh, around eight or nine that I liked and two, two super liked. So yeah, and I applied around six, yeah. 
that's that's how much I applied. Uh, on the skills required, yeah, mostly what I've seen is uh, Python, uh, that like uh, machine learning, uh, PyTorch, yeah, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow. Yeah, so I've been trying to refine my skills on those from from what I have seen, and also I think in the morning, uh, Abdul Hamid mentioned that we actually have to see the SFIA. So I refer the document, and I'm, I don't know where to start. I will be asking the team, but I'm trying to align myself, my skills with SFIA requirements. So I, I don't know when, but it would probably be this week. So the job responsibilities. Mm, what is response like it's most of most of them are in, interesting so i i actually don't have a specific job responsibilities that i couldn't talk about right now but mostly it would be model optimization that i saw so yeah uh that I, one one thing that i applied also had a responsibility in c plus plus it was from NVIDIA, I guess. So yeah, impression about the company. Okay, the ones we applied, or uh, I, I don't know what you mean by the company. So the ones yeah. we okay. Yeah. So impression about the company that like um, from the jobs that you are looking at, the, like uh, not necessarily the jobs that you have done for the study, the company or company studies that you did. But like um, the jobs that you are looking at uh, to apply for, basically, if you have gotten any kind of impression about the companies, uh, like um, what do you think? Like, do you think that these are um, big companies, small companies? What is it is like? Uh, do you think it will be a good place to work at or not? Something like that. Any kind of impression you have? Okay. So one 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 company that stood out for me was. Uh, like I, I hope <laughs> I get that job. Uh, maybe most unlikely, but uh, it was it is a new company that heavily uses AI, and I think they are heavily uh, recruiting people. I don't know how I found it, but mostly I get I get the links from Leap. Oh, not links actually. When I didn't have the links, I would just have the roles in the company name uh, search on google so i think i'll get uh, i'll get back to you with the name but they are from uh, uh, mostly the the founders are from google uh, and i think nasa so i i think it's it would be fast paced environment also a really good place to have uh, mentorship uh, like a really good place to learn from so i just got ahead we and applied so yeah this that's the company i think that's it's basically really in early stage really early stage so yeah that's that's one of the things i i saw so did you notice any particular trend according to the lip is mostly data related yeah and uh yeah so, so the skills mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah continue sorry so this the skills mostly are the same so like even in data engineering uh, some of the skills are uh, some of the skills in ml uh, of, of of course in python are needed but ML, Py, uh, PyTorch, and TensorFlow are mostly there. So yeah, so I think I I will need to refine those. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very good. So um, yeah, so basically this uh, like um, noticing the skills that are generally required and what you think you need to work on is very like it's important like that's why like uh, you need to be upskilling at the same time that you are 
uh, applying for jobs. Uh, so very good. Thank you, Abu Bakr, for this. Um, yeah, so about LEAP, uh, because LEAP is still kind of, uh, there are still kinks that need to be uh, um, corrected. Can you remind me what is your track? Is it uh, machine learning and engineering or Gen AI? Gen AI? Uh, it's, it's Gen AI, so. Gen AI, okay. Yeah, yeah but I haven't, I, I got some AI engineers in I engineer see. roles on LEAP, but mm -hmm. uh, most, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, hopefully, like the problems with leap will be uh, fixed soon enough. Um, yeah, so but um, other than that, uh, this was so instead good. of instead of waiting for uh, the leap to come back, so shall we uh, start looking on, for example, websites, other websites until then? That okay. Yes, until then, or even after when Leap is working, uh, like after um, they fix the errors or the issues that they have right now, you still like encouraged to also look at other stuff uh, if you have when you have time. Of course, like um, because uh, there might be jobs that are not you cannot find on Leap just yet. So if you have time, please, uh, yeah, you are encouraged to look at other platforms as well um so Henok. okay hi good afternoon good afternoon uh, uh, i actually have like uh, a question for abu Bakr. uh like uh, when i saw like uh, some jobs like he said uh, for uh, gen ai many of them mention pytorch uh, tensorflow and also uh, like some modeling tools i forgot and I, I, we haven't worked on both of them, and I see those things like in most uh, in most job postings. So, like, are you uh, trying to upskill? And if you are, what uh, resources are you using? Uh, so, so sorry, you know, I lost you. Yeah, uh, you I was just. Yeah, I was just saying, like, uh, most JNAI job postings, uh, it's not just about RAG or uh, uh, they usually include, like, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and uh, modeling tools, other modeling tools. Like, uh, we didn't, and we didn't work on those uh, uh, in the 12 week training. Like, I was wondering whether you, you're trying to uh, learn those things. And if you are, like, uh, like, I just wanted to know what resources you're using. Yeah, so I actually, uh, I did start something, but uh, mostly on theoretical parts, like uh, how do we optimize a model? Uh, like, like for example, I think this was MT9 who told us about overfitting and fitting something. So, like the theory aspects of that, at least uh, to be aware of. So, like, if you wanted to optimize any model, it might be resource intensive or trying to fine tune it. Uh, you might not have, I might not have, for example, the capability of doing that. So, I, I, I just started from the theoretical aspects. What is there? What is in the industry or something like that? So, I also uh, I didn't actually uh, do that, but I'm planning to actually dig deeper on PyTorch. I, I chose I chose PyTorch just for the start. So yeah, uh, that, that that's basically what all I can say. Yeah. Uh, are you using like uh, YouTube tutorials or maybe Coursera courses? Oh, uh, I actually am using uh, what do we call Data Camp? Do you know Data Camp? So I found I found those from one of the uh, documents Ten Academy shared with us. There was a reference for it, 
So I just dig deeper and found it. And I, I set up my profile. I signed up there. And I think they have also a track to his, or a really good uh, track or a career plan or pass, I, I should say. So I will send you the link now. So yeah, you can check it out. They are really, they, have, they even have challenges, so, so some sort of like that. So it's easy and self-paced. All sent you. OK, thank you. OK, hey, that was very good. Uh, thank you, Abu Bakr and Henok for um, yeah these questions and answers. So yeah. Um, just uh, a note maybe to complement this yes in even in the ai gen ai uh, track you need to have a good background in machine learning basically deep learning in particular and pytorch or tensorflow they are kind of used for the same thing so you can focus on learning one you just need to understand at least uh, when you remember when you did fine tuning um the fine tuning project you had to run uh, through PyTorch or TensorFlow, the fine tuning actually, the, to do the actual fine tuning. You have to understand what you did there. Like, what are you doing? What does that mean that you are like looking at a particular layer? What it means that you, how you define these, these different parameters? What are you doing there? So basically, because part of your um, of your work could be like if you want to fine tune a model, you need to understand what are the knobs are you trying to to change. So yeah, it's a theoretic theoretical understanding, and basically, if you can learn also not on fine tuning um, uh, large models, but maybe you can just learn on just working on in deep learning and just fine tune uh, like learning how to train models there. So it just uh, use these frameworks there and like basically understand how the framework works. And uh, yeah, that's basically, uh, yeah, so this is a starting point basically. Okay, anyone else? Do we have uh, volunteers, another volunteer? Like one, someone who wants to share what they learned or things they noticed uh, for on the jobs that they were looking at? On leap or otherwise? Of course, other questions are welcome as well. So if you have questions or if you want to discuss something else, that's also welcome. Yes, Abdurrahman. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I don't have uh, something uh, I noticed to, to be valuable, but uh, I have a question. Maybe you can make others think about it. Uh, for some jobs, I'm not sure if I understand the role exactly, but I feel like uh, this is something I can apply on. But when I look at the salary, I see something big, like 100 and more K. Uh, so, is the salary considered as uh, a big indicator, or <laughs> or or what's what's the problem exactly? Am I understand the role wrong, or so I didn't get it uh, really? Okay. Uh, so, anyone to want to to say something to that, or um, okay, one there, huh? Yes. But then I can go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I was muted. I was saying, in my in my opinion, I realized the jobs that have like I think if you look at like uh, the entry level payments and then there's median level payment and then seniority level payments. There, that's when you know. And also some jobs, yeah, especially like on uh, like Glassdoor and other other except LinkedIn. Some of them like they would say like they're paying you between a hundred thousand dollars to like hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. But then when you read the like the roles and the the yeah like the roles and the responsibilities of the job, you realize that most of that stuff is like for someone at median at median level or seniority level. So I think when I see a job that they're paying like a hundred thousand a year, I just know 
I automatically know that that's like someone who is like at median level or seniority level. Even like when you read like the responsibilities they want you to do, sometimes they say they want you to lead the team or something like that. So I think that's the best way to to like gauge because at entry level, I don't think I don't think you can be paid a hundred thousand at entry level. So that's what I think. Okay. Uh Okay, so this is um, a good a thing to think about, yes. Um, if you have to really go through the job description carefully to understand um, if there is a mismatch basically with what you expect. And um, so, yeah, uh, Hilary, you had your hand also up. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah and it's what Martin has mentioned most of it. Uh, the, the range you can you can gauge you can gauge um, uh, the the level given the payment but since let's since on leap you uh, mostly the payment is not shown uh, you have to go to the website to see to see about it but um, what I've noticed also sometimes is the 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 role is not uh, no the uh, location. The location may not be provided and when you go to the site you find uh, they are mentioning a salary range uh, and then a, a location let's say in US so w when I see it's like uh, from like 80 and above I I for me I'll, I'll, I'd like start with the assumption that it's only based on it's a uh, it's a it's an on-site job that is in the country in, in that place that they've mentioned and it won't be a remote job it's past a certain amount that's what i normally do and then i find out if that's the case yes so a good thing to to yeah so this is i think i think is a good point uh, another thing to note is that uh, the location of the job the location of the company matters a lot as well because the range is uh, what is a starting salary and what is like the range of uh, salaries differs from a country to country. So I think uh, you can not notice that uh, jobs in the US will have a higher salary range than jobs other in other places, even in Europe. So this is just like, um, just in general, the, the salaries will be even higher for starting job. Uh, so I I don't know, like uh, the job can be on site, but uh, sometimes they would be open to relocate someone. Sometimes they are not. A lot of the times they are not. So I'm not sure about how to uh, gauge, um, like, would the salary uh, be like, uh, how can you gauge when it's like um, the relocation will be available or not? I don't know. Um, so we have uh, Henok and then Abdurrahman. Henok, you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to tell you guys like uh, an advice a friend of mine gave me. Uh, like when you see a company, uh, you can go to their LinkedIn and look at their people section and uh, see if uh, like they have employees from like Africa or Asian countries. Like it could be an American company and they could have like a couple of people working from African countries or Asian countries. And uh, that could signal that they're like open to hiring people from these regions. That's a good point. Very good point. Uh, good advice for my friend. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, basically, I don't have anything to add. This is very good advice. Uh, yes, Abdurrahman. Okay. Uh, actually, what Hillary said led me to another question. Uh, are we capable to apply for job on site? Uh, for example, is uh, the company will will do the interview with me online and give me the chance to travel to this country or this uh, considered as a dream and I should focus on uh, remote only. Okay, Hilary, do you want to answer? Mm, yes, I have something to say. And when you, when let's say it's on site, but they can, maybe they can get you there. If, there are some sometimes you have to look for questions like are you are you able to work can you like can you do you have a visa for work working work visa you know those questions like 
um, like if they if they if like you can get yourself the work visa or they have to get you the work visa and something like that and if you're allowed to work in the us there's like work permit or something so you look after those questions if that is the case but normally there'll be like those work permits and visa you, you just have to make sure that if you have them maybe good for you but i'm i'm not sure it might be a tedious process Yes. So, uh, yeah. So, what uh, Hillary said is like, yes, in the job description, sometimes you'll find exactly that there is a requirement for you have to have a job job visa already. Uh, so then, like, as someone who is not there and you don't have the visa, this is not open for you. Uh, relocation, because like uh, um, a company offering relocation, this is extra, like extra paperwork and extra maybe extra like. Um, um cost for them to do so a lot of companies don't offer that but it is available in some times and yes as grace said sometimes you'll find that in in the job posting i don't know if you can hear me there's some noise on my side but okay so um one second I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. As yes, as, as I was saying, like Grace said, you can sometimes find they mentioned that they will there um, where you look to relocate people. But sometimes you don't learn this from the job description at all. You apply, and then in the next step, they will ask you, "Are you here? Are you? Do you have like the a visa to work here?" and then uh, at that step you learn that you cannot really get that job so um yeah some of this i don't know if like there is a like a, a fast uh, quick rule to to know from the job description uh sometimes you just have to actually ask uh, or like uh, you go through and then you find out that you don't like um, they don't offer this but it is not completely a dream it's not um it happens sometimes i don't know how much and especially like at the moment because there are remote jobs available so they don't really need they can hire people from far away without actually relocating them at all um sometimes it happens after they will like work them remotely and then they relocate you but i don't know how like much of the time this happens i don't know uh so like uh, maybe this is a question for someone more um i don't know if you can find this information somewhere okay so um anyone else who want to share something so like uh the session time is over but like uh, of course if someone had a question or you want to share some insight you learned so far um can go ahead also just uh, um hillary yes go ahead yeah, yeah, so I have some things to add uh, that I discovered. Well, again, on the jobs, I it, it was when I was looking at certain job, and e even on LinkedIn, there's a point that they say it's remote, but they don't specify uh, who they can hire uh, or from which country. So further on the description, they normally add, like, uh, they sometimes said that it's only for US and Canada residents and you know that uh, at that point I just have to exit uh, from the job and it was working it was uh, I, I encountered a few of those so on leave so if if they are going to like provide us for uh, like it's if it is going to present for us the jobs I think they would maybe like also maybe analyze those and filter them out in some way so that um you know we don't have to spend time looking at them uh necessarily and also on the salary uh yeah i noticed like the salaries are only for for those that are in u.s residents and if you if you're in remote they it will normally 
maybe go higher up to 60 or 70 at most for entry level positions and i yeah that that does i noted that them out and i realized that if they say remote and on-site like they have options for both they will have differing salaries so and and also the one that has you know that these jobs that has online uh, remote locations that say somewhere us california but they don't they don't mention if it's on site or remote so normally i would conclude that i would use information like Saturday to conclude that it it probably on site so uh, that's what i discovered for most things uh yes so good good um um i think uh, you have a good approach or like you have a good um um observations um okay so about leap i think they are going to they they are going to like uh they are going to be looking at the information for remote i would say if it's only available for people from the us or only people from like the americas also sometimes they really just want per a person who from the same time zone basically um so they will filter those out so you will not uh it will be they um anything that can be learned from the job description that is not make the job unsuitable this will be like uh, filtered out um like um by leap um so yeah regarding the salary using the salary too yes of course so it makes sense that the remote uh, job had a different salary um uh, like sometimes they would say the job is remote but it's like uh, they just mean hybrid and they would want you to be like on site sometimes so that means that's only available to people who are in the country um yeah, so these are all good observations. Um, okay, uh, someone else? Wandera, yeah. Wandera, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, when I'm looking at like the data engineering jobs, they uh, they usually have like specific tools. They like they need like I don't know. You, you need to be good. Like let me say at Python, uh, uh, SQL. Then like there are tools like Airflow, Kafka. So uh, am I supposed to be like? Am I supposed to choose? Let me say one workflow tool one batch processing tool and then like learn like not to use each of one of them or like i don't expect like like in the interviews i don't expect them to ask me about the tools or i should like pick a tool one individual tool from each process and then pick one tool and like have some best knowledge on that on the tools to use like uh, so because on like all the jobs i keep seeing there's there's always like some specific tools of course some some companies only use cloud so i know that if they use cloud i know i know some of the tools they would use so should i like pick let me say some cloud tools and learn a few of those as well as other tools that we have done let me say during intern academy i don't know if you understand my question yeah i, I think yeah I, I, I think i there is a yeah um sorry um I get. I think I get the question. And uh, regarding the like uh, the pipeline, there are for each process. I would say you not need to have big knowledge on one tool. You have to actually have a good experience using it. Like uh, let's say you have to aim for to be an expert at using that. Like if you are like looking at scheduling and like uh, one tool can you can use for scheduling is Airflow. Really learn how to use Airflow implemented you have already like applied it in some of the the projects on the during the training so if you haven't like uh, really mastered it go back and make sure that you can implement it well in every in all the on all the projects um and at least uh, if uh, for each like tool I've, of course they're not expected to learn each tool every tool available but uh, at least know like uh, you can use uh, for example let's continue with airflow you can use airflow for scheduling but what else can you use for scheduling other tools learn about them some have some basic knowledge about so if you are asked in in um, uh, of course like uh, during in the job description they will have like as i mentioned some tools maybe 
if you match uh, some of them you know some of them some like you don't you have only basic knowledge it's 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 still fine to apply for that job and like you're going through the interviews and you just have to like really um make sure that you can answer most of the questions sometimes during the interview they will definitely sometimes they will ask about tools in particular so they will ask you like can you use dbt have you used it can you like are you really um an expert at using it can you like they will ask you a particular question about that and of course there can be also technical challenges so that they will give you to to use particular things as for uh, cloud tools these are a particular problem because like um we can, of course, you can learn about them, have basic knowledge about, but some of the cloud tools you cannot really learn on your own uh, because you can, you need to pay basically to use the tool. And how can you manage to upskill yourself in using a cloud tool if you have to, like, if you can, you don't have access? Uh, so for that, you didn't actually ask this question, but this is me, like. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm posing the question myself and I really don't have an answer for that, like uh, to give you an advice to do that. Um, all I can tell you is that if you can find some, uh, first like just learn some theoretical knowledge about how things work, like uh, what are different cloud tools to use for what. And uh, if you can find any kind of um, learning material that you can access, do that. So the more you know the better so i hope that i answered your question wandera okay great Henok. uh yeah I, I just wanted to add to what wandera said like uh, my friend uh, who like went through 10 academy and now has a job uh, one of the things he told me is like when it comes to data science uh you're very unlikely to be like setting up uh like uh, pipeline stuff uh, like airflow and uh all the other things like docker and stuff like that like i remember when we did it like the most frustrating part was setting it up and uh configuring it and stuff like that but when you work in uh like uh, a company like especially a western company it's usually going to be set up and you're just going to be managing it so like uh, according to this advice like uh, i think what mt said would be right like focus more on like uh, uh, the theoretical part knowing what to do and the setting up part you're very you're probably unlikely to do it in the work environment uh, yes again so henok henok's friend is um advice is very good uh yeah um so yeah what's uh, what Hinoka is saying is correct so in a starting job for a data engineer probably you're not going to be building a pipeline yourself you're just going to be joining a team that already have uh, like a pipeline built um and uh, like they have particular tools they are using so they probably want to make sure that you are familiar with them uh so if you have uh, the basic knowledge of how they are working, how they work, or what they are working, um, how they can use them. If you have some experience working with them, that will be better. So again, in the upskilling, this upskilling phase, try to familiarize yourself with as many tools as possible. For each process, as Wendera was, was, or was basically emphasizing, for each process, at least uh, familiarize yourself like with what tools you can use in general. Uh, so we have some basic knowledge about uh, as many tools as possible, but like folk, you can also focus on one tool and like uh, try to, if you can, use it and like uh, aim to have to be like an expert in using it. So like uh, learn as much as possible about that. So and basically, if uh, of course, like when you like apply for a job and you get an interview, you can go back to what the the tools they mentioned and try to like uh, really um in like uh, whatever time you have you can just uh, learn as much as possible about those uh before your interview when you're preparing for the interview um okay so um 
I guess we like um, anyone else who wants to say something or to ask a question. So okay, so this uh, we will we'll be having a similar session tomorrow. So I want you to look at this like the pinned. Um, uh, the list of questions when you are going through job applications or jobs today and tomorrow basically think like keep this in mind maybe you can write down like what you have noticed uh, or like just note it and then like uh, maybe you can share it tomorrow um i think this session was uh was fun thank you for everyone who was who was participating who like everyone who uh, shared and everyone who asked questions. Uh, so I will see you tomorrow then. Uh.